anglicized till now is the important part played by plywood in the invasion of Normandy. Birch, maple, and mahogany go into the making of this newly developed war material. After being boiled for 24 hours, the logs are first turned to true roundness before going into the machine that planes off the veneer of which plywood is formed. So thin is the wood sheeting that more than a mile is yielded by a single log. And then it moves into a drying oven which reduces the moisture of the wood. Alternate sheets of wood and glue make up the plywood. The preparation of the sheet glue is a secret. The secret also of the tremendous strength of the finished product. Layers of wood and glue are stacked up like leaves of a book. The materials next go into machine press, under whose pressure they form finished plywood. This can be put to many war uses. Regiments are now crossing rivers in Normandy over pontoons floating on plywood boats. The Army's folding boats, often used by forward units, are also made of plywood. They are light but stand up to the roughest treatment. The glider is another wartime application of plywood. Here are motorless aircraft of the kind Allied divisions flew into France. Their lightness and strength were of the greatest value to the airborne troops. The greatest triumph of all in the field of plywood is the Mosquito, fastest operational aircraft in the world. Allied air leaders call for a fighter bomber of such speed that it could bomb Berlin in broad daylight and get back again. The designer's problem was to cut down weight, and planes of plywood were the answer, an answer that will also be given to many post-war problems. <laughs>